Hi, my name is uh, Jonathan Muse. I've been in the Atlassian world for, I've forgotten how many years, <laughs> uh, maybe since 2011. Uh, I've been a Jira user. I've been a Jira admin. Uh, I've managed products using Jira, and now I manage products for Jira. Uh, and in that time, I've had a lot of uh, experience and challenges with uh, reporting. And um, today I'm here to share some of my tricks and, and hopefully it's new information that you're able to use for yourself in order to get uh, data out of JIRA. Uh, so first, let's just talk about what type of data you might want to get out of JIRA. And the first thing to talk about is uh, performance indicators, key performance indicators. Uh, so these are going to be the most important bits of information uh, for you to for you to retrieve. And what I've seen in a lot of uh, Jira instances, because I have had opportunities um, doing consulting work where I go into other people's Jira instances, and I see them grabbing bits of data almost. At, at random. It's like they get the data because they can, they have this information. Um, they think it might be valuable, but they're not exactly sure how they're going to use it. Um, but they just go ahead and, and grab it anyway. Um, and so Jonathan, it, it almost... Yes. Just let us know when you're sharing, right? Oh, I'm sorry. No worries. I wasn't sure. Luckily, you didn't miss anything important. Um, so they have all this data, and it almost uh, creates more noise for them. And it almost confuses them more having all this information. So it's important to get the right data, the data that's going to matter the most to you. Uh, the way you do that is uh, with key performance indicators, because they, they monitor um, health, uh, the health of your projects, the health of your um, instance sometimes, whatever that uh, thing is you're measuring, they can be used to determine uh, health. They measure progress. They measure uh, patterns. So if you have the right data, you can review this data and find um, trends in, in the data, which you can then use to make adjustments to either the systems you're using to monitor or, or um, using these metrics to monitor or uh, the work or the projects you're using to monitor. So having the right data is uh, more important. It's more important to have uh, a few bits of data that is the right data than having just this massive amount of data that is, is just the wrong data. Uh, otherwise, the data becomes the problem instead of the, the tool to, to use to solve your problems. So how do you select uh, the right KPI? Uh, and that really comes from the business and the problems you're trying to solve. And the KPIs that are available in JIRA out of the box are, are pretty basic. Um, you know, they tell you how much time has been logged against an issue. They tell you the start date, the end date, uh, but they don't really uh, go any further than that. So here's some examples of the type of KPIs that we could be getting out of JIRA. Um, just the time spent fixing bugs in particular, uh, which is a measurement of quality of, of what your developers are doing. Um, the number of bugs per user story. Uh, again, quality. Average time spent testing an issue versus uh, developing the issue, uh, the percent of bugs open on specific projects or, or products. Uh, and then this information can be derived into costs. So you can understand how much time you spend developing versus testing versus fixing bugs versus uh, supporting products. So these are just some of the examples of uh, KPIs that I've used for actually uh, developing 
add-ons for for Jira and and understanding where my my time is being spent with my team, uh, where the costs are ending up, and then I can make adjustments. I can hire either more testers or we can slow slow the pace down and try to write better code so that we're not um, creating so many bugs. And you can really begin to control uh, the quality of what you're doing as long as you have the right data. Now, in order to get the right data, uh, you're going to need to add some things to your system or, or do a little bit of work. So like I said, out of the box, what you're able to measure is, is actually very little. Um, so some examples of the automation I've used for reporting, uh, I'll, I'll talk about that. But the, the benefits uh, are process enablement, uh, tracking and reporting, and planning and refinement. And, and when I talk about automation, it could be um, many different things. It could be uh, just an add-on that calculates these fields for you, um, just out of the box. Uh, there's plenty of great products out there, so that's automatically doing that. Uh, it could be something that actually um, does calculations and updates tickets or creates new tickets based on those calculations. Uh, it could be a lot of things. Um, I'm going to show you a couple today. Uh, some are ones that uh, we've developed and most are actually not. Um, just things that I've seen other people using and they found extremely valuable and I've used and found extremely valuable. Uh, one of which uh, is health reports. And health reports is actually for taking a look at your JIRA system itself um, from the from the view of a JIRA administrator. And it uh, uses automation to grab all the information about your instance, such as how much memory it's using or uh, what exactly is in the instance. And it integrates with things like uh, the database and uh, the issues within JIRA in order to generate these, these reports in it quick way. So there's a couple different ports that you can generate for, for this, um, two of which are actually more for the, the product owner. Um, um, the Agile health report and the project health report are more from the, um, the project standpoint, why the system health report and the admin health report are more from the, the JIRA administrator perspective. Uh, I think I have a thought problem. Uh, so what I'm going to show you is uh, Power Dashboards, which contains health reports. And Power Dashboards is one of the re reporting tools I use. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the pros and cons of Power Dashboards. Uh, Power Dashboards uses what we call the Power Suite, which is an automation suite that's built on a, a common language. And I'm going to actually show you some uh, examples and, and strategies of uh, how I get some of these KPIs in reporting. Um, and I'll show you in my uh, here instance. So these are some of the, the tools that I've uh, seen, because like I said, I have done consulting work for people and I go in and see how they uh, set up their reporting for JIRA. And one of the first ways is with uh, custom fields to take uh, a custom field and either calculate the data you're looking for, place it in the custom field, and then use standard JIRA um, dashboard gadgets for reporting. That's one of the most powerful ways. Um, so a couple different add-ons you can use. Um, one is a project track from uh, Desir, uh, which we'll probably see later. Um, so you can get, you can theoretically take some of the uh, custom fields that come out of this and put it in uh, charting dashboard gadgets. Uh, rich filters for JIRA is uh, very popular. Uh, and what you're able to do is control the dashboard as a whole. So if you make a selection of one dashboard gadget, it actually updates the results on other dashboard gadgets. So uh, it's kind of a dashboard in the, in the truest uh, sense of uh, the word. Um, one of my new favorites uh, for just charting is uh, it's just called Custom Charts for Jira. It's a solution by Old Street. And 
the flexibility and power for just setting up these uh, charts is actually, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing what this can do. Um, and it's just very elegant and simple to set up. So uh, I really like this solution. Uh, to go deeper into reporting, uh, you can use something like uh, Easy BI in charts. Um, it is kind of an investment in time and energy to, to use these, and there might be uh, simpler ways to get the data. Um, I've actually used calculated field in conjunction with Easy BI because sometimes doing the calculations within Easy BI uh, isn't as easy as, as it could be. Um, so that's one of the things that I, I do uh, commonly find myself doing is actually combining a couple add-ons together in order to get uh, the data I'm looking for. Um, so those are some of my uh, go-to um, tools for, for doing these types of uh, um, reports. But let me show you another. Uh, this is called uh, Power Dashboards, and what we're looking at now is actually um, a health report uh, that tells you information about the system, and this is just a dashboard gadget that you can, can drag onto the screen, and you get information such as the health of the system. Uh, these are actually standard JIRA checks, and if uh, your instance were to fail, uh, you could you would have a link to the documentation which you could follow. Uh, so for example, within my instance, the uh, it's failed because I have a duplicate epic story link within the, uh, within the data, which is actually something I've seen across almost every peer instance I, I've looked at. Uh, and then link to the documentation on, on how to fix it. So these are actually custom uh, checks that you can only do if you had direct access to the database. Uh, so that's very helpful. Uh, the admin report gives you additional information such as uh, what's in your JIRA instance. And this is a brand new JIRA instance I actually set up today. So there's actually very little. Uh, who your JIRA administrators are, and I really don't have any. Uh, and last, login activity. So this is uh, also really helpful for administrating uh, your, your JIRA instance to see when the last time, you know, maybe, maybe you have users who haven't logged in and months and you could really just get rid of them and save yourself some licensing costs. Uh, and then project role usage, which, which users are in those roles. Um, one of the big questions we were trying to solve is uh, how you can clean up your, your instance. Um, so for one, one, we're trying to figure out how many custom fields can you get rid of? Because that's another thing I see a lot of times when I do consulting work uh, for people. You know, they were trying to grab all these all these metrics to use them reporting for Jira, and they did so by just adding all these custom fields, which nobody ever uses. Um, and I'm talking tabs and tabs of custom fields, uh, and then people just use the bare the bare minimum. Um, and so you've really kind of created all this noise inside Jira, and and you could do with some cleanup. But how do you know what to delete? Uh, so we tried to answer that in two ways. One is um, what custom fields are on screens but don't have any data, uh, or yeah, and then uh, gave some thresholds uh, by project uh, that you could use to um, determine how many of these fields are populated by projects. So. For example, I had pretty good population here because I don't have a lot of custom fields. Uh, but on older instances, I was seeing population in the fractions of 1%. So obviously that custom field wasn't being um, used very much uh, and could be deleted. This is also another example of the types of um, KPIs you could create. Um, what we're doing here is calculating population by the number of issues in a, in a project. Um, and we're, we tried to come up with a numerical indication uh, of whether this you know, is being populated or not. And um, as one of the practices that we 
we learned during this exercise that we found could be applied across other KPIs we're, we're trying to make? How do you take something that maybe uh, isn't so easily expressed numerically and converting it numerically? Now, in this example, it was kind of easy to do it numerically, but, um, and, and then how, even if you have a number, how do you determine if that number is good or bad? And uh, we came up with uh, thresholds that we determined that it needed to land between you know, 60 and 100%. So knowing what threshold uh, you're aiming for is, is very important. Uh, because then if you were to take this data and maybe chart it um, using something like this, um, this Old Street solution, uh, you could then color code the information and then you could consume that data uh, very easily based on the colors. So, you know, how you construct your metrics is just as important as uh, what metrics you're, you're trying to construct. Uh, and then other unused elements. Um, so things like components and custom fields and just trying to get an understanding of what is going on in your system. Um, so that's some of the things we try to solve with uh, these reporting dashboards. Um, now, there are others aimed at the, uh, the project managers themselves, like the, the project report. And uh, what this does is, uh, well, this one's just a high level overview of what's in the project as far as what issue types, uh, what the project roles are, who uh, would be in that project role. But considering I set this up just a few hours ago, it's really um, not much information, but then we go to the uh, the Agile report. And this is just testing how well your tasks are defined from an Agile perspective. So it's assuming you have epics and uh, stories within that project. And so we created some metrics like how many of those stories are orphaned and are not associated with an epic. Because uh, we thought that might be a good indication of um, just categorization of those stories. Um, how old are they? Uh, maybe they're, they're aging and they're, they're more than um, you know, three months or six months old. And um, maybe you know, they shouldn't be used in the uh, other calculations you're doing. Um, such as uh, sprint metrics, sprint reports. Uh, how many have uh, story points um, or how many are, are unestimated? Um, those are some other things we came up with in order to determine just the health of the overall, the overall project. Uh, and then sprint, sprint health is uh, similar, but it's uh, breaking things down, not necessarily according to the, the epics and their association with the epics, but with the stories and their association with uh, the sprint. Uh, you know, how many are in a sprint and don't have estimates? Um, how many are in current sprints? How many are in future sprints? And then the same things uh, with, with versions. Um, so, uh, the other things you can do with, uh, power dashboards is actually custom reports. That's really what it's about. Uh, so here's just some examples of, uh, some custom reports. This is actually, um, a map, uh, that is actually active. Uh, this is actually a working, uh, HTML, uh, five Pac-Man game that, uh, you can play. And this is also um, charts. Uh, the charting library is actually built into the tool and you actually uh, do a little bit of scripting to get the data and, and provide that information and it automatically converts it into chart. But this is a very labor intensive uh, way of creating um, dashboard reports. Uh, so if you have these um, more purpose-built tools um, it's definitely a place to start. Um, now, is this kind of proves that you can ultimately achieve what it is you're trying to achieve, uh, which a lot of people have honestly uh, just, they, they kind of uh, complain that, that getting data back out of JIRA 
uh, is impossible. Well, it's, it's not impossible. You just need to uh, do a little work on it. And, and anything is really possible with a tool as, as flexible as this. Um, so, uh, yeah, but my, my uh, advice for people uh, who are, are looking to get more data out of JIRA would be to start at the, at the custom field level. Um, figure out what it is you're trying to track and start with uh, some basic uh, custom fields, numeric if possible, um, because it, uh, the numeric fields are actually going to feed into the standard JIRA uh, charts. Uh, dashboard charts. Um, and then you'd be surprised what you can uh, start accomplishing using out of the box reporting and just a couple uh, basic custom fields. And in order to populate those custom fields, you might need to look into uh, automation solutions. And there are there are many. Um, I can show you some uh, examples of um, different calculated charts using uh, the solutions that uh, I've created, but um, there are certainly too many uh, solutions to list. Um, so at this point, are there any questions I can answer for people to uh, talk about maybe what I've done here, or uh, we can discuss any other charting challenges that you may have come across? I'm certainly willing to work with a few of through a few of those. Uh, looks like you had Old Street on a couple of sessions ago. I just checked like yeah. they, they gave a great presentation and Thomas very made a good introduction to their tool. Actually, I have from your um, Power Dashboard a question. You showed the map. Have you had the opportunity to combine like the map and and uh, custom fields from Jira like, to make it more interactive? Uh, I have. Um, I actually created a solution. Um, it was for a, a telecommunications company um they put up uh, equipment on top of cell phone towers mm -hmm. and um they it, it was actually a friend of mine whose company it was and he was having a problem managing everything out of uh excel <laughs> and i said i have this great solution and he gave me the requirements and um they wanted to be able to map the location of all their towers uh, and be able to provide directions for, for drivers and, and things like that. Um, they had all these uh, requirements. Sometimes if, if the tower was on top of a building uh, in, in a historic district, they had to know how far it was away from a historical building because it might uh, obstruct the view of, of the, the building. And then they had to... Um, you know, work with uh, historical societies to get approval to construct the tower. So they had all the, they had more mapping requirements than I actually in, anticipated. Um, and you know, the the mapping solutions out there are, are very flexible. They're very powerful. Uh, there's all these APIs where you can actually draw shapes on the map as far as like a radius around the tower, and um, all just using some some simple data. So I was able to. Um, um, create that solution using uh, Leaflet and, and OpenStreetMap, which are the maps I, I've used here, um, all with data inside a, of JIRA. And it was actually a very, very powerful solution. I, I didn't actually use it from a, a dashboard perspective. I, uh, I actually had it on the uh, issue view. Um, so, uh, this tool, Power Dashboards, is part of the, the Power Suite. And um, there's a, a tool, uh, which is sort of the, the first tool you would start with with the Power Suite called um, Power Scripts. And one of its features is uh, an HTML panel on the issue view where you can actually quite easily take, um, 
take HTML and uh, render it on the page. And um, I can actually show you that. Um, I don't have it exactly set up at the moment, but it'll only take a couple seconds. Uh, panel. I, I don't want to push this topic too far because I know you have a lot of experience with that. Maybe just give the others an opportunity to at least ask their questions. Sure. <laughs> Uh, I'll be done here in a couple of seconds, but uh, right. you can go ahead and ask. Is it that? Oh, cool. Is it that easy? It was, except I don't see my weather folder. Uh, not that easy because my uh, my script was is missing. Anyway, uh, it, 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 it was a weather forecast of, um, you know, the next seven days is what I had. And that was through a third party solution offering the weather. But um, yeah, I'm still setting up my uh, my demo instance here. Um, because I know a lot of cases where customers are using Jira, like they have the problem, some service is down. So even within their own organization, people have to be aware, like things are broken or customer um, reporting services down. And sometimes it's very useful to have a map. I was in telco business myself. So then we can, could locate, oh, it seems there has somebody damaged one of our fiber um, cables. So then we could see way easier that affected customers in this area could be grouped because they were there on zip code and stuff like that. So that's great to see that's now power, um, uh, possible with Injira. You know, there the was the, the thing I was asking because I couldn't see why would you come up with a map? Where are the issues? Yeah, I mean, a lot of these integrations I do, and I do a lot of integrations, it, it's, it's, uh, Jira is so flexible. The possibility is always there. It's, but do you have the other tool to do it for you? You know, do you have the, the leaflet and an open map tool here? Do you have that, that, uh, Pac Man game ready to go? Uh, <laughs> and, uh, like what you see here is uh, a utility I built that goes out every single day and grabs the weather forecast. And, um, you know, I can display it in custom fields. Is there a service out there that will give me the information that I'm asking for? And um, if there is, you can certainly bring it in. This is also, um, you know, something I tell people, they, they a lot of times have other systems other than JIRA. And they're not bringing that data in and they're not combining it with the data in JIRA because I will say it is actually easier to bring external data into JIRA and report on it than taking JIRA data and you know, moving it externally and reporting on it that way. It's, it's possible, but it's harder. Um, so my favorite thing to do is, is to integrate with all these other systems that people may have and bring that data inside and really just dropping them in custom fields is, is step one. Um, once you have it there, then you can use all these other tools to, to report on it and even just dump it in Excel. I mean, the amount of information you can get just by doing an Excel export and then, you know, a couple clicks later is, is massive. So that's another thing I've done with these calculated fields is, is actually, um, I've had custom fields that were really aimed at being used in the Excel data that I export. Um, I even had one that was actually an Excel formula that all it did was provide a link back to the issue because you don't get that in, in Excel. Um, and it, and it used the, you know, the, the formula syntax so that it was immediate, immediately recognized by Excel as being a formula and created that hyperlink. Um, so there's all, all these possibilities. Yeah. I wish we would knew earlier back in 2015, <laughs> 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 where I tried to export a lot of Jira data into spreadsheets and then report on it. As yeah. you said, it's the harder, the harder way, the other way around. I learned to help is way easier. So, but maybe this is the stage on the right time. Like, are there any more questions? Now's your time, Jonathan is here, willing to answer almost every report question. 
Uh, I have a question regarding this uh, health report um, about this uh, custom field. Uh, to what extent is this uh, customizable? Uh, can, you, can you show a bit there? Yeah, so this is actually, um, what I'm showing you right now is Power Dashboards. And with Power Dashboards, if you want um, a health report, like the Agile report, you just add it and then you can uh, enter the, the jQuery Mm -hmm. as to what projects you want it to be looking at. And that is the extent of how uh, customizable it is. Mm -hmm. However, um, health reports actually started out life as like a open source project, uh, I'll say, um, in, in the uh, power scripts language or, uh, that it has. So let me just... Um, So if you actually look at the documentation, um, the original health reports um, is, is open to the public in this uh, Bitbucket repository, and along with all the installation instructions and, and so on and so forth. And what's different about this one is it's, it's much more complicated to set up, but it's, this isn't just the health reports that I've shown you. It is a reporting engine. And this one works off of uh, CSV files. Like you don't even necessarily need to know this language in order to modify these reports. You can create new reports and you can add sections to existing reports simply by updating uh, the contents of these uh, CSV files. Um, so here uh, is an example of one uh, where there's a section um, and, and it's, it's literally uh, jQuery that's uh, determining how many issues meet this criteria. And so the, uh, the jQuery is actually uh, right here. And uh, that main filter is, is just which projects and issue types you might be looking. And then it's kind of adding saying, and issue type is story and story points are empty. You know, So I think a lot of people uh, could write this and, and modify these reports. Um, we did this primarily because those, met, those, uh, those metrics we were talking about saying that you know, your results should fall between 60 and 80%. Well, we went out there and we interviewed people saying, uh, what is the ideal uh, range? You know, how many of your issues should be estimated in, in a project? And we got wildly different results. <laughs> so we said, well, we don't know. Uh, this, this sounds good. And we'll just make it completely customizable. And, and you, can, you can change it for yourself once uh, your company uh, starts using it and you know what you want it to have. Um, so if you're looking for something customizable, I, I'd kind of direct you over to, to this. And like I said, it's, a, it's an open source project. Um, and you can really make this do whatever you want it to do. Thank you. Cool. And for the others, don't be shy. That's the place. Ask your questions. <clears throat> you can also ask like if it was too fast <laughs> because there's a lot of advanced reportings that we learned about today. And it wasn't from your introduction. Not sure if you, you um, get all the specialties of JIRA and um, custom fields, like the dependencies or the possibilities. So if there's anything, uh, we should have a closer look. I'll just ask, you're allowed to. So um, Jonathan, do you have more sessions coming up? Where you talk about all the power of Jira and reports, and uh, I don't have. Um, uh, I might have one other session that I have uh, yet to uh, schedule, um, but I don't have any planned right now. I did. A, I did a lot more in the beginning of the year, um, as as I think you know. Um, 
and I've been taking the summer off. That's cool. That's actually a great plan to be honest. <laughs> I don't know. We <laughs> took up the presentation to a new level. So every other week is, you know, we should have done more vacation planning. Yeah. In Gira. So um, <clears throat> do you have another he hidden feature or talent um, that you want to share from the Jira reporting? Uh, well, I can, I can show you this language a little bit, which is really uh, my secret to success, because I do go into all these different um, Jira users, sometimes very large organizations, um, and, and they have me solve problems for them. And I always solve them using the same tools. Um, and they're actually very easy to use. And I think one of the, the problems why people don't start getting into uh, like calculated fields more themselves is because they're intimidated. And a lot of what you find out there, a lot of the tutorials and the examples are uh, using way more complicated tools than, uh, than I think that they really need to be. And the reason um, you don't necessarily find some of the tools that uh, I'm gonna show you is because they're so easy, you don't need to go out on the Elastian community and, and ask for help. Uh, so here's one of the, uh, uh, just a regular um, JIRA issue I have, and this is the, the summary that was uh, actually created by automation. Um, and this is the, uh, the editor for uh, the scripts I use. And what I'm actually gonna do is um, in this example, I'm gonna tell it which issue I'm talking about. But when you go to run this uh, as part of a, a scripted custom field, for example, or a post function or some other way, it already knows what issue you're talking about. So you don't actually ever have to tell it what, what issue it is, uh, except for when you're writing a script. And what I'm going to have it do is um, I'm just going to have it print out what the summary is. And I do that just by saying return summary. Uh, and as you can see, it, it displays the summary right here. And I didn't have to uh, call different Atlassian classes to say, uh, you know, load up the field manager. Now I'm going to initialize, you know, these, these custom field variables and do all these other things. All I said was, give me the summary. So it always runs in the context of the issue. And not just that, but it also runs uh, in the context of the user uh, just viewing the, the issue. So here it knows who I am. Uh, so it knows everything about the issue, knows what the key is, it knows what the project is, uh, knows what its parent issue is, if it's a subtask, it can literally get anything about the issue, and I'm just using, you know, one word. Uh, what's neat about this is it also works in reverse. So if I were to say description... Uh, questionable use of caps there, but uh, you get the point. Now you're not going to see anything down here because I didn't tell it to, to write down there. But if I come back to this issue uh, and I were to refresh, you can see that I actually edited the issue this way. So now imagine if I wanted to do something like create uh, a numeric custom field based on priority. You know, uh, that way I could use it to sort my dashboard um, dynamically, or if I wanted to populate a chart, literally all I would need to do would be, you know, to, to, uh, to set the value of a custom field, uh, you know, field equals you know, five, whatever. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so it would be a little bit more complicated like that than that. I could say, you know, something like if uh, priority, Hi, um, then, you know, feel. Um, but as you can see, uh, the syntax is, is remarkably like, like JavaScript. It basically is JavaScript. Uh, you don't really need to know uh, 
that much other than what logic you're trying to accomplish. Um, and, and so I can write these so fast that what I do during Atlassian team or what used to be Atlassian summit, uh, when they actually used to be in, in person is I used to invite people to come up and say, whatever it is you're trying to do. And I mean, literally whatever, I'll do it in under five minutes, like right here in front of you, I had a monitor up on the booth. Um, because these scripts are so, so stupid, simple to, to write. Um, so just imagine, you know, being able to just that easily get uh, the data out of your instance, what you could do from a reporting perspective. Uh, for example, um, you know, people have a hard time, like just exporting all their users out of their data instance. Uh, I could easily, uh, you know, there's only me right now. Um, I could easily just dump all my users into a CSV file. And not only that, but in a couple of seconds, I could write what groups they're in. Uh, users, because I've forgotten this. All right, so there's three users. I could get something like, uh, you know, if I if I just did some formatting, I could make this a CSV file. And so all the time within my company, uh, you know, we have 300 consultants um, working on client instances every day. Hey, how can I get uh, a list of users or a list of groups out of Jira? And it's like. I can do it in 30 seconds. Um, so, you know, getting data out of Jira isn't just about charts, but this is another great way because I can then download what comes into this console uh, just by hitting this download button. Um, this thing here, for example. Oh. Yeah. So now, now I have the makings of a CSV file, uh, and I can I know the user's email address. You know, I know what roles they're in. I know what groups they're in. Uh, I know the last time they logged in. Um, you know, um, so this is a really powerful way of just getting data out of Jira. Um, and this is this is uh, the simple issue language. And this uh, admin tool actually comes with Power Dashboards. It comes with Power Scripts. You can actually, um, this is actually uh, just the SIL engine uh, and you don't even need uh, any other add-on to run this. It's actually free uh, if you just wanted to uh, install the SIL engine by itself. Uh, it's a dependency for the Power Suite, but uh, most of the capability actually comes from this engine. And what the other tools like Power Scripts and Power Dashboards are, are the ways to run this, you know, run it on a dashboard, run it as part of a workflow or a listener. Otherwise, you just have this. Um, but, you know, when I was a Jira admin, um, before I started working for this company, um, I would do things like this for people. And um, at the time, it wasn't called Power Scripts or any of that. It was called uh, Jujupin, uh, J J U P I N, which is uh, an old Romanian word for magic wizard. Um, and I, and I, I actually, it's kind of like a love hate relationship with that name because um, I love that it, you know, the, it meant wizard because uh, people used to call me a wizard because I could get all this data and I never told them how. <laughs> It'd be like, well, guess you don't know how to use it like I do. Uh, you know? <laughs> and I, yeah, it's what gave me my magic powers as a Jira admin. So um, would you like to do, or should we do a short recap? So what we learned today? Because the, today is scheduled, and I have to to be to confess, I still need to learn time boxing. <laughs> so <clears throat> today we learned that Jira has its limitations. You, Jonathan, showed us how to break limits 
in Jira to get data in, to get data out. That there are several marketplace add-ons. You mentioned the Dizer one, you mentioned the from Old Street. Old Street, um, I, I haven't used Rich Filters myself, but I know it's very popular among uh, the customers that, that we deal with. Um, the the Desir um, views these a lot, um, uh, you know, for, for different reasons. Um, and then, you know, the ultimate, but this is also, despite its name, one of the, the harder uh, solutions, but, you know, with, with the power and the, uh, the, the end result, of course, comes uh, an investment in time and energy in, in getting those results. You could say it's the Mercedes of the reports, like we in Germany. We know when to pay extra for uh, advanced reporting, but yes. Um, mm -hmm. And like the last one, the, um, the add-ons from, Un I never heard them, Unova apps, like where you got the power scripts from. Yeah, um, so Could it just you can see know. some of these here. Uh, this is a uh, Anova apps. Um, mm -hmm. It was formerly C Prime. I just shared the um, link to the marketplace so people know. Yeah, you know, that's an add-on you can ask your Jira admin, or if you're the role yourself, you can upload it to Jira, and then you get all the magic. Jonathan just showed. Yeah. Uh, and that's what uh, Power Dashboards, Reports and Gadgets. We also have uh, Power Custom Fields for scripted fields. Um, power Actions gives you buttons you can click to make things uh, happen. And, and it, it's all done using um, this scripting language because uh, at the end of the day, um, people who really want automation always end up dipping their toe into the, the scripting world. Um, but you do have a choice as to how hard it has to be. And this is kind of uh, the, the much simpler end of the scale. Yes, and my favorite quote would be like, you could put any data into Jira as long as it has an API or spreadsheet. Yeah, uh, and I've also actually done like data patches for people where, um, they they uh, they did a lot of CSV imports and they did the CSV the import and started working with the issues and they said whoops we we made a mistake we had this other data that needed to go in, into it as well uh, and I was actually very uh, easily able to import this and update those issues rather than so yes getting data in is is more than one way um, there's many ways to get data into, into Jira. We are so delighted to have you here. And so each and everyone who's now starting to use more advanced reports will be glad to have joined the session.